All right, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at problem 11 from the first super quiz. And here we're going to be using uh, what in the homework we call the generalized mean value theorem for integrals in order to find an upper and a lower bound for this particular integral. When we integrate from pi over 6 to pi over 4, the quotient cosine of t over t dt. Uh, so uh, one of the things we get to choose here uh, based on this, this formula above, is which function is going to be our f and which is going to be our g. So we have two different functions we could be thinking about here, cosine of t and 1 over t. So uh, there's a hypothesis is that g of t shouldn't change sign on the interval. So the interval is pi over 6 to pi over 4. Uh, 1 over t would be positive anywhere on that interval. And cosine of t, that actually also would be positive anywhere on that interval. So we can choose either one of these functions to be our, our g. All right. So uh, we're just going to pick one here. Uh, you might choose the other one, and that's fine. Uh, but we'll just pick one. So I'm going to choose my f of t. Uh, so this is a choice. All right. You could have chose the other way, but I'm going to let my f of t be the cosine of t. And I had no particularly good reason for making that choice. Uh, I, I just chose it sort of as the first thing I saw. So then my g of t will be 1 over t. So uh, what we, we see is that by the generalized mean value theorem, the given integral is equal to, okay, we have f of c, so that would be the cosine of c, Okay, where we don't know what c is, we just know it's some value in between pi over 4 and pi over 6, times the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 4, 1 over t dt. And we can actually compute this integral because we know an antiderivative for 1 over t. So this will end up being the cosine of c times the natural log of, well, we're just going to do pi over 4 and then natural log minus, or minus and natural log of pi over 6. So this will be log of pi over 4 minus the log of pi over 6. Okay, and if we use some log properties, we can simplify uh, this expression. So remember, if you have a difference of logs, that's the same as the log of the quotient. So this would be the log of pi over 4 divided by pi over 6. Okay, well pi over 4 divided by pi over 6, that should be the same thing as the log of 6 over 4, or 3 halves. All right, so we know that the original integral is equal to the cosine of some value between pi over 4 and pi over 6, uh, times the natural log of 3 halves. So the only thing unknown here is what this value of cosine is. And so if we want to put an upper and a lower bound on this integral, it's the same thing as putting an upper and lower bound on this product. And I can do that by just saying, well, what's the, the lowest this number could be? And what's the highest this number could be? Now we know that the cosine function can go between negative 1 and 1. However, that would require you to be able to have your inputs go all the way between negative pi and 0, or if you like 0 and pi. But here we're only allowed to go between pi over 6 and pi over 4. Okay, let's quickly do a sketch of the cosine function. So at 0, you start up at 1. And when you get to pi over 2, it gets down to 0. Well, pi over 4 which should be, uh, actually, it's a little halfway in between. There's pi over 4 and pi over 6 in here. Okay, we can see they're going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. And we know that the pi over 6 is a higher value and the pi over 4 is a lower value. Right? And we actually know what those values are, but for the moment we're just looking at this picture and we say, okay, it's decreasing. So the highest, the cosine of C, could possibly be on this interval, right? Because c lies somewhere in between. 
the highest cosine of c could be would be the cosine of pi over 6. So we can say now that, you know, let me just copy this down below a little bit. If I integrate between pi over 6 and pi over 4, cosine of t over t dt, that this cannot be any bigger than when we replace this cosine of c with the cosine of pi over 6 times the natural log of 3 halves. Of course, we know cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. And it can't be any smaller, right? It can't be any smaller than when we replace cosine of c with cosine of pi over 4. It's the smallest it can be. So I'll have cosine of pi over 4 all right, times, of course, the ln of 3 halves. And again, the cosine of pi over 4 we know is root 2 over 2. So an upper bound will be root 3 over 2 times ln of 3 halves, and a lower bound will be root 2 over 2 times ln of 3 halves. Okay, so what if we had made the other choice? Fair enough. So let's make choice 2. So if we had cho chosen to make our f of t equal to 1 over t, and our g of t equal to the cosine of t, well now when I can rewrite this integral, cosine of t over t dt, I know by the generalized mean value theorem this will equal, instead of the cosine of c, now it would be 1 over c. Of course, it's a completely different c. It would be 1 over c times the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 4, and now I leave the cosine inside. And I know how to compute this integral, Again, using the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So any derivative of cosine is sine. And I'll do sine of pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 6. Okay, well, sine of pi over 4, that's root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 6, that's 1 half. And so in total, we have 1 over c times root 2 minus 1 over 2. Okay? Or we could, if we wanted, we could multiply those together, but we don't really care. All right. So the point is now, we don't know what the c is. However, on the interval, we know what the largest and smallest values of 1 over c could be. Remember, as t increases, 1 over t decreases, right? So if we drew, again, another picture here. So we'll put in pi over 6 and a pi over 4. And if we drew 1 over t, right, it's going to look like this. We see, again, we actually have a decreasing function. So the highest possible value we could get for 1 over c on this interval is going to occur when c is pi over 6. So I can integrate between pi over 6 and pi over 4 cosine of t over t. And I know that that cannot be any bigger than when I replace c with pi over 6. All right? And then, again, I have my root 2 minus 1 over 2. And we could simplify if we wanted. Uh, let's see, that 6 would come up, cancel with a 2, and so we'd have 3 times root 2 minus 1 over pi. On the other hand, you can't make this 1 over c any smaller than when you let c be pi over 4. So that will give us a lower bound on this integral, 1 over pi over 4 times root 2 minus 1 over 2, which, again, we could simplify this a little bit. 4 comes up, cancels with the 2, and we get 2 times root 2 minus 1 over pi. So in this case, we now know that this integral cannot be any bigger than this 3 times root 2 minus 1 over pi, and it cannot be any smaller than this 2 times root 2 minus 1 over pi we found an upper and a lower bound. All right, and if we had a nice you know, calculator, for instance, we could see what these upper and lower bounds were, and we actually might see that, hey, in, in one case, we get a better uh, approximation than the other. Okay, but for the exam, it's good enough to leave it in this, this exact form.